Epithelium is classified in two different ways. The first way is by the shape, the uh, shape of the cells themselves. There are three basic shapes. One is called squamous, which is a flat tile-shaped cell. Another is called cuboid, which is square and cube-shaped. And the other is called columnar, which are more rectangular in shape, like a column. There are a couple of exceptions that we'll talk about as we move on. In this first image that I'm looking at here, it's a combination of a microscopic image as well as an illustrated image. And this is taken from the outer surface, or the superficial surface, of the small intestine portion called the jejunum. The internal surface of the jejunum is lined with epithelium as well, which would be the luminal surface. What you're looking at here is the external surface called the serous membrane. So this space here would be the space surrounding the small intestine. This would be the abdominal cavity, the space between the small intestine and other structures. These cells and these cells in here are the epithelial cells. And in this particular case, they're called simple squamous epithelium. Squamous because of their shape and simple because there's only one layer. Again, these are the squamous cells, the epithelium. And all under here is connective tissue. So again, a single layer of flat tile-shaped cells on the surface. Again, here's the space. And that is classic for simple squamous epithelium. If we look at this picture here, now we're looking at more uh, examples of simple squamous epithelium. Here, in this picture here, you have a distinct space, and it's lined with flat tile-shaped cells. This is from a kidney. This is a filtration unit in the kidney. And again, this is epithelium lining a space. This space is called a capsule and these are epithelial cells lining that space. This is also simple squamous epithelium. In this image here, you can see a kidney tubule. A kidney tubule is a small tube that helps the kidney produce urine. In the center of that tube is a space called a lumen. A lumen is the hollow portion or the inside of a hollow vessel or organ and that lumen is lined with small cube shaped cells. The nuclei are darkly stained inside and these cells are square. They surround a lumen which means they cover and line a space and there's only one layer of them. It looks like you've got multiple layers but remember this is a lumen, this is a lumen here. Each of these lumen have their own layer of cuboidal cells. So it really is only one layer of cuboidal cells. So this is simple cuboidal epithelium. Now you can see that single layer of cuboidal cells. In the next image, we can see a single layer of columnar cells. Look how long each of these cells is. These are long cells. They are column shaped. They've got a single layer of nuclei that you can follow and connective tissue underneath. So it is one layer of epithelium. Here's a lumen and here is the layer of epithelium lining it. This is simple columnar epithelium. These are column shaped. You can see them up in here as well. These big modified columnar cells are goblet cells and they produce mucus and release it into the lumen. Uh, this particular picture is from the digestive tract. There's a layer of microvilli on the surface to increase the surface area. This is simple columnar epithelium. Now we look at the stratified epithelium. The epithelium that has multiple layers. So here is squamous cells up in here. So you can see that there are very many layers, too many to even count, of flat tile-shaped cells all stacked on top of each other, all lining some kind of space, which you see here. This is stratified squamous epithelium. There's nothing on that space.
space. There's, there's nothing on the surface of those cells, on that apical surface. Except when you look at this picture here, which is a different example, you've got a fibrous protein on the apical surface of all of these stacked up squamous cells. There's cells right there, cells right there, 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 etc. This is called keratin, and keratin is what you find on the surface of your skin, and it's a dry, fibrous protein that helps to uh, protect our skin from abrasions and microbes and things like that. So this is stratified squamous epithelium keratinized, and that's the keratin. This is stratified squamous non-keratinized, which you would typically see inside your body, like lining your esophagus or lining the cervix. This is what you typically see on the outside of the body, like your skin. This is a sweat gland. This is stratified cuboidal. So this is a little bit tougher to recognize the actual cubes, but keep in mind that there's there really isn't a chance for it to be columnar because the nuclei are just way too close together. It's too square. So if it was columnar, it would have to come out way further like that, but it doesn't. So what we have here is cuboidal cells, and there's more than one layer of them. There's a layer right here, there's a layer there, there's a layer there. So this is a sweat gland, there's a lumen right there, and that is stratified cuboidal epithelium. This is the duct of a sweat gland. This one is columnar, so now we can see how long these cells are and we can also see that there are two distinct layers of nuclei there stratified columnar now sometimes it gets a little bit out out of sorts so the typical shapes are squamous cuboidal columnar and it's either stratified or it's simple however sometimes the shapes don't really arrange themselves in perfect layers the way we'd like them to. And you get something that might look stratified, but really is only one layer. In this example here, we have what's called pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. And what you'll notice is that even though it looks like there might be multiple layers because the nuclei are at different heights, they really are only one layer. They all start at the bottom, and they almost all of them reach the top. There's some goblet cells. You can see cilia, which is a really nice view right there. And these are pseudo-stratified because it looks like there's multiple layers because you've got nuclei at different varying heights, but it really is only one layer. And then finally, we have a type of epithelium that actually changes shape. Transitional epithelium is found in the umbilical cord and the urinary system. And what happens with transitional epithelium is that the surface of the cells, when, they're, when, this, when the tissue is not stretched, like the, the urinary bladder needs to stretch because it's going to fill with urine, when the tissue is not stretched, you get very cuboidal looking cells, like that. And they're fairly roundish, kind of square. Sometimes cuboidal looks a little more round than cube, but it's still essentially the same. But when that tissue becomes filled and stretches, those cuboidal shapes start to look squamous. They flatten out and they stretch to give that, uh, that organ a little bit more flexibility. So what you have here is what's called transitional epithelium because it transitions. It starts off looking cuboid, finishes out looking squamous.